How did this turn out like this? Hang on for the loop. loop. Four, three, two, one. I'm Ricky. I'm Jamie. And today we're getting artsy. Woohoo! Our goal is to set out and paint something we've never painted before. Okay, so we're gonna. Yeah, what are you thinking? I'm gonna go for the cactus moon All right. horizon. I will go for. Ah, I'll do the ice cream. <laughs> All right, this is our hope that we'll take a blank canvas and make something creative and new. Even if we face some obstacles before we get there. Our belief in imagination can only take us so far. And we need some action. Some momentum. Mm. How can we activate hope? Check this out. Do you have a goal for the future? It could be something like making the basketball team or becoming an astronaut or setting the world record for the most cotton candy eaten in five minutes. No matter what your goal is, the question you'll probably end up asking is, how do I get there from here? And this is where hope comes in. Hope is more than dreaming about a better future. Hope gives us the inspiration we need to move forward and take action. And when we pray about the things we're hoping for and follow God as he leads us, we can have confidence we're moving in the right direction, even if we face disappointments along the way. A while ago, my sister moved to Wales. In case anyone doesn't know where Wales is, I'm over here in the United States and my sister is way over here. There's like a whole Atlantic Ocean between the two of us. And not long after she moved, I decided I had a goal. I wanted to visit my sister. But I wasn't going to magically end up in Wales. I had to ask the question, how am I going to end up there from here? And Hope gave me the inspiration I needed to figure out the answer. There was so much I needed to do. I had to order my plane tickets and make sure my passport hadn't expired and get some luggage and make sure I knew where I was going to stay once I made it to Wales. It was a lot and honestly, it was kind of overwhelming. This was the first time I was going to be traveling out of the country by myself. Two weeks before I was supposed to go, I had everything ready. The only thing I was a little worried about was getting sick. That would mean having to delay or cancel my trip. So I was really super careful. But then my parents ended up getting sick instead, and I didn't know what to do. I really wanted to go see my sister, but I also wanted to be there for my parents if they needed me. I had spent months preparing for this trip, and it felt like it was starting to fall apart. That was a really big disappointment for me. So I prayed about it a lot. And I told God that I would follow him and do what he wanted me to do, even if that meant not getting to see my sister. I knew that wherever he was leading me, that was the best place for me. And after talking to my family about the situation and praying about it some more, this is what I felt God telling me. Go see your sister. I'll take care of your parents. So I got on a plane and 24 hours later, I made it to Wales and my sister. And a few days after that, my parents started feeling better too. God had taken care of all of us. No matter where you are in life, you can have hope for the future. God is with you. And if you talk to him about the challenges you're facing and the goals you have for the future, he'll help you move forward. You may face some disappointments along the way and things might not always work out like you hope they will, but you can trust that God is in the process of making all things new and use that hope to help you take your next step forward. 911 emergency services, what's your emergency? Yeah, I'll take a pita party platter, extra olive oil, large side of lentils, and do you guys have spring water? So this line's for emergencies. Well, well water will work just fine. This is not a restaurant. We need some food. We've been out here listening to Jesus teaching. It's all been good stuff, but it's dinner time, and we're out in the middle of nowhere. We're getting hangry. Our blood sugar is low. I'm losing hope. You didn't bring food with you? I've been snacking all day. This morning I had a squirrel in a school. What is that? Oh, you know what that is. It's where you hide walnuts in the bellies of fried fish. I've never heard of that. And then for lunch I had a swarm on a kid. I don't know what that is. That's where you take the baby goat cheese and you cover it in locusts and honey. It's delicious. These are not real recipes. What I could really go for right now is a duck's feast. I don't want to know what that is. That's just torn off bits of barley bread, but you soak them in water. Wet bread, man. This is not a catering service. I've called this number before and they brought me food. 
This is Donkey Dash, right? No, it's not. Hold on, I'm being asked to sit in something called a small group. They found some food for us. I hope it's a slippery Newton. That's that thing where you cover a fig cookie in olive oil. It's gross. Wait a second, this is just some kid's food. Hey, hey, hey! If you think this basket of five loaves of bread and these two tiny fishes are going to feed all of us, you've clearly never seen my family eat. Sir, we need to keep this line open for actual emergencies. There's not a buffet in town that we haven't been paying from. This basket isn't going to go far. There's at least 5,000 men out here, at least. Hold on, what's going on here? What? I don't, I don't know. No matter how much people take, there's still more. This isn't natural. Is this a miracle? I don't know. Am I in a miracle? You might be. No way! I'm in a miracle! I had zero hope that food was going to find me out here, but wouldn't you know it, Jesus came through. Man, oh man, he provided. Wow. That's great news. Well, I'd like to cancel my order. There's no, sir, uh, he hung up. All right, we're ready for our painting challenge. Let's do it. Woo! Oh, All mystery right. hand. That was a surprise. Uh, it says... Challenge. Don't forget your skates. What? <laughs> As you make your art, you must stay moving on your skates. What? Uh, cut to the roller rink? All right, so we are here where our challenge is going to take place. We have to paint our uh, painting references on this blank canvas with these paints over here. The trick is that we can't stop moving on our skates. We have to constantly be skating and moving. Yes. It's gonna be challenging. Are you ready? Okay, so I, I am nervous, but I'm up for the challenge. So you see, the last time that I skated, I actually bruised my tailbone and I couldn't sit for two weeks. Oh no. Luckily, the loop team has provided me with a tushy pad. And so if I do fall, it will be okay. But I'm a little nervous. <laughs> I think you're gonna do great, Jamie. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right, let's go. <laughs> Woohoo! Okay. Grabbing the paint, brush. I need All right, this here color. we go. Keeping it moving. All right, let's see. Oh, that's not too bad. Moving, moving. Okay. I'm skating oh, and goodness. painting. Okay. I feel like Ricky is going to <laughs> skate laps around me by the time. Happy little cactus. And turning. Okay. <laughs> here I come. Uh, hey, hey, I'm headed your direction. You're doing great, Jamie. <laughs> I don't know this is supposed to be how you skate. Oh, oh goodness. Okay. <laughs> All right, yellow, I need you in okay. my life. Here we go. All right. <laughs> so tense. Oh boy. Okay. Uh, Blue. You're doing great, Jamie. <laughs> thank you. Oh, that looks amazing. Oh, thank you. I already <laughs> forgot. Wait, what color? Oh, purple. <laughs> I think, is that blue? Oh no, I dropped paint. Hey. Sticking yes. your tongue out helps with your balance. That's true. That's it's scientifically proven. Proven. Here we go. I tried to outline it as best I could. Um. Did I, I do need it? another color. Hurrah. Jamie, you're doing great. I think I need to add one little thing. Uh, boop. I think I'm done. Yay! <laughs> what do you think? What do you think? Eh? Uh, eh? Uh, you could just paint one in text mix million for my painting. Text mix. I know you can be delivered. I know you can be transformed. I know what it's like to have no hope and find immediate hope. My past does not disqualify me, it has prepared me. You're better prepared to help others heal. You're better prepared to help others rebuild. You're better prepared to help people know there's hope even in your darkest moment. When I was in sixth grade, I was in gymnastics. And at my gym, there was two teams, and one of them was the competitive team, and that is the team that I wanted to be on. And what I know is I was older than a lot of the other girls, and so I had a lot of hope and a lot of excitement that I would get on this team. And when it came to tryouts, I feel like I did really good, I was excited, and then I heard I didn't make the team. And honestly, I was pretty disappointed. I spent the next year pushing through that disappointment and trying again. I practiced, I perfected some of my skills, tryouts roll around the next year, and I didn't make the team again. And man, that was even a bigger disappointment because this is now my second time trying out and I didn't make it. But I didn't lose hope. I tried again in the third year. I finally made the team and that was something that I was really proud of myself for pushing past that disappointment. 
There are many things I hoped for. Some of them I got, some of them worked out like the gymnastics team, and others of them didn't. And if you're hopeful for a better tomorrow but hit a massive roadblock, what happens then? It's easy to feel hopeless when you get knocked down in pursuit of the future. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, we must accept finite disappointment, but never lose infinite hope. But how do we possibly tap into something like this when we're knocked down on our butts? If you ignore obstacles or pretend that you have control over something that you don't, that's not accepting finite disappointment. Honestly, hold disappointment for what it is and don't try to fake smile your way through it. It's okay to recognize I'm disappointed, but also recognize this, that God's goodness doesn't stop with our disappointment. That when our best intentions fail, God is still working and He is still good and he, something good is still going to come out of this. We have that infinite hope. That infinite hope is not based on our strength, but God is strong and He never fails. And knowing this, we can get back up. Start solving problems, try again, or imagine new goals that will push you closer to what God has called you to. With honesty and work, you can use hope to stir up love within yourself and within others. And before you know it, you're back on track moving forward. Jamie, how do you feel your yes. painting turned out? Okay, um, I think besides the obvious thumb mark where I was holding my canvas, uh, you know, I mean, I think it turned out okay. And, and besides the spot where I uh, slipped a little bit and kind of went off the ice cream cone, you know, it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. No, I, <laughs> I feel the same way about my, I feel like if you look at mine from a great distance yeah. and like squint your eyes, they basically yeah. look identical. Yeah. Oh. I like it. I'm just proud of myself for actually trying this because the last time I skated, I bruised my tailbone and it hurt really, really bad. And so I was really scared to get up on those skates again and try it. You but did a really great I job, did. Jamie. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> that was the triumph. Maybe not my ice cream cone, but my triumph was getting up and trying it again. Here's a verse that gives me hope. This verse, verse gives really me gives me hope. A verse that gives me hope says, but you, God, see the trouble of the afflicted. You consider their grief and take it in hand. The victims commit themselves to you, and you are the helper of the fatherless. The reason this verse gives me hope is because I recently lost my dad, and I love the part of the verse that says, you consider their grief, and then the part at the end that says, you are the helper of the fatherless. It's just a reminder to me that God sees me where I'm at and that he is ready to help me in all of the hard things. A prayer of hope. A prayer, a prayer of, hope. of hope. A prayer of hope. My best hope is in you, God. It's not my plan or strength. My future is yours. So guide my path with infinite hope. No matter what circumstances come my way, I will not give up. I will not give up. I hold firmly to the hope I claim in you. I hold firmly to the hope I claim in you. I hold firmly to the hope I claim in you. I hold firmly to the hope I claim in you. I hold firmly to the hope I claim in you. All right, Jamie, if mm -hmm. this were a real life ice cream cone, would you eat it? Uh, I probably wouldn't trust like the, the green part because you know, green probably means mold. Probably means we've got a moldy cone here. Yeah, absolutely. That's my thought. I, I'd probably have to say the same thing about the cactus. Uh, I 
Uh, yeah. I probably wouldn't eat it because uh, it's green. And I've, I've been told very spiky and pointy. Uh, another thing I was going to point out was, you know, yes, my, my thumb thumb mark here, uh, but also I decided to just kind of go with where the art was leading me. Mm -hmm. yes. And so I drew a little arrow pointing to my thumb mark. Yes. And then I labeled it thumb. Mm. Oh, I see. So it, can you turn it yeah, sideways? Yeah. And that, you, there it is. Thumb. It says thumb. Two on the nose. Not abstract enough? I think it's perfectly abstract. And whatever painting you do from here on out, you just have to leave a space for your thumb and mm -hmm. then write out thumb. Thumb. That's my signature. Good job. Thank you. You as well, sir. Thank you. The hope and goodness of God doesn't stop with our disappointment. Or get disqualified because we've messed up in our past. He is faithful. Even when we get knocked down. And as you move forward, Put your hope in God. He will guide you towards great acts of love. Until next time, enjoy, enjoy the ride. ride! Hope will show us a better day. And if you're disappointed, push past that disappointment and focus on God's infinite hope. Let us pray. God, thank you that you are God that we can have infinite hope in. God, I pray that when we're disappointed that we get back up, that we don't stay knocked down. And God, I pray that we would just be focused on that hope in you. In Jesus' name, amen. So if you are disappointed this week, I just want you to know you're not alone. Push past that and focus on the hope of God. There is more in you and there is more for you. We're praying for you guys.